Hey guys, this is Parney from Dash Car Productions. And before we start today's video, I just want to give a quick shout out to my buddy Nick. He has a 2015 WRX that he modified quite a bit and he let me drive his car and we went for a ride and that car is absolutely fantastic. It really shows how much potential uh, the WRX has. So I finally got an access port. I'm really excited. I got it for $550 uh, Canadian used. They usually go for about $1,000. Let's talk about what an access port does. Now, Cobb makes access port, not just for WRX. They make it for all other brands like Porsche, BMW, and some, uh, some other ones. So it also comes with a wire that you can connect to the OBD2 port, and then it'll connect to your engine's ECU. Now, it, would, it can show a bunch of parameters of what the engine is doing, for example, boost or your air-fuel ratio and some other parameters that we'll get into a little later. And it can also pick up codes too. Um, so if you have a check engine light in your car and you want to know what it is, this guy will bring it up. So it is a really handy tool to have. If you are going to install this with your car, there's always a question about warranty. Um, and we'll talk about warranty uh, or how it avoids your warranty in a future video. So stay tuned to that one. So if you have a 2015 WRX, make sure you get uh, the correct access port because there are different access ports for different vehicles. So inside this one, there's a few different uh, mats or tunes that Cobb has pre-installed inside of this. So for example, one tune is just stage one tune. And what that really is, is they take the WRX 2015 wherever they are and they start doing dyno runs and start making adjustments to make their own tune. And keep in mind that this tune is very specific on what that you're allowed to put on the car. For example, there's a tune that says you can do stage one plus the Cobb intake. So make sure you follow that. So when you put a tune in, it changes the engine management system. So it changes timing or it can change timing. It can change air fuel ratios. Now I'm wondering why you want to do that. Well, if you're going to be modding your car, you need to adjust the engine parameters to support the mods. For, for example, if you're gonna put a J pipe on a WRX, the flow of the engine and the, the way the turbo is gonna spool up is gonna be very different. So the stock management system is not gonna be able to handle that mod. It can lead to your engine being blown. So it's very important to have the correct tune. Now, you can also do something called an e-tune where there's a few people out there that'll make a tune for your specific car in your environment and that's a really good thing to, to do so when you just put the over the shelf tune or the pre-installed tune on your car it might not work 100 percent in your car because there's different elevations and the way they make the tune it's on the conservative side so when you do an e-tune the tuner can really dial in the parameters the air fuel ratio the timing the way the turbo spools they can make those adjustments to your specific vehicle. Now the WRX, every single vehicle is slightly different the way it comes out of the manufacturers. So the specific tune that you get on your car is not going to work 100% on the WRX 2015 next to you because it is going to be slightly different. Now, should you get one of these? Well, if you're going to be modding the car, yes, you do need one of these. Um, having said that, you can go to a few tuner shops and they could put a tune on your car it just without having this. So there's other ways to get around it. It's just this, you can monitor a lot of stuff. Now I am gonna be focusing on the 2015 WRX. I'm not gonna get in the STI. The WRX tune is actually really bad when it comes to drivability. One big issue is the rev hang. So when you switch from first to second gear and you push that clutch in, the revs actually hold. It doesn't come down. And you do want the revs to come down so then you can time your shift to have it really smooth into second gear. Problem is it holds it there. So you have to wait a second or two seconds for it to slowly come down or you release the clutch and force it to come down, which is bad on your clutch and you're gonna wear it out quickly. It's not very intuitive. So it's very frustrating that way. And another really big issue is the throttle position. So if you're going to be putting 20% throttle, it equals to 90% power. So it's very finicky the way that the throttle works and the turbo is a bit unpredictable. Sometimes you put 10% and you get one, two PSI or other times you get six PSI. So it's a bit all over the pace. So putting the pre-installed stage one map from Cobb, is gonna fix a lot of those issues. It's gonna eliminate most of the rev hang. It's gonna fix that throttle. So 100% throttle is gonna equal 100% power. So that makes the car a lot better to drive with. It should have came out of the box like that. Now, this car is also known to have a huge drop off in power around 4,000 RPM. It just pulls a bunch of timing and you really feel it. Like 
If you floor it and around 2000 RPM, you're gonna feel a big rush. And then once it hit 4000 RPM, it literally like falls flat. And it's really frustrating and does pick up power after 5000 RPM, but it's really disappointing. It really takes the fun out of the car. So putting the pre-installed map, it really fixes that. It does end up holding the power a lot better. Now, like I said earlier, putting the pre-installed map, you might have issues like, for example, dam issues, you might have feedback knock, you might have fine knock learning, which are really important things to monitor. Um, those things will most likely happen on these pre-installed maps. That's why you get an e-tune. Those parameters you're monitoring are always gonna be zero or not gonna be fluctuating. And I will make another video regarding the things to monitor and get into really fine details of what is what and what you should be looking for and what's an acceptable value. So stay tuned for that one. So I actually have my friend's WRX, which has a stage one tune and it is a custom map. He did get an e-tune. And one of the things he did mention was um, the over-the-shelf tune was causing, or the pre-installed tunes inside of here was causing a lot of issues. So we ended up getting e-tune and that fixed everything up. So what we are gonna do, we're actually gonna go for a quick little drive. And me driving the car and you seeing how I'm reacting, you might have a better feel if you wanna do a stage one e-tune. So these are the things that we're monitoring right now. We have intake temp, fine knock learn, feedback knock, intake temp manifold, air fuel sensor one ratio, and dynamic advanced multiplier or called Damn. So we'll make a video talking about each thing that we are monitoring and why you want to monitor it because it is really really important But for now, uh, we'll just talk about how the stage one tune feels So in my friends WRX, it's the first thing I notice is the throttle positioning. It's so much better It's a lot more linear like I'm putting 10% throttle and I'm getting 10% power. It's not going into boost It makes it so much easier So it's releasing putting a little gas 22% at minus three. So I'm still in a vacuum at 22%. That's so much better. A lot easier to control now on this low speed. We come to a stop sign, we're gonna make a left. Let's see how the rev hang does. So it instantly comes down. Oh, that's so much better. So you can make a lot smoother shifts. So our first gear going off, 70% throttle, we're at minus three PSI. Second gear throttle, the RPM drops right away, so it can make a lot smoother shifts. This is how the car should have came with. I mean, with the stock tune, it's so frustrating. It, all the inputs, are, it's very random. It's you might get boost, you might not get boost. It's very unpredictable. That's the problem with the stock WRX. And now with this tune, I mean, forget about the increase in power just the drivability it's it's so much better this is how Subaru this is how the car should have came with so I'm very curious on how it's gonna handle after 4,000 rpm because so far it's it's really good the tune makes a really big difference now keep in mind this is a e-tune so it's gonna be a lot better than the over-the-shelf tune my friend's tuner he said that this car makes roughly around 250 wheel horsepower I mean, take that with a grain of salt because it's just probably a virtual dyno and they're not the most accurate. Reading all the forms, I wouldn't be surprised if there was some power because they are increasing the boost to 19 PSI. So there's a lot more boost in this engine. Yeah, it comes a lot better. So 26%, it just was at zero PSI. On the stock tune, that would have been 100% throttle. It makes the car a whole new experience. It's a lot more Fun. It's like I bought the car again. All right, so we got a little more open road here. So let's see how this feels power-wise. So we're in second gear and we're gonna give it some gas. So much better. It holds. Oh, that's so much better. <laughs> oh, that's so much better. It's holding power. Like you can leave it past 4,000 RPM and it goes. And putting 50% throttle and getting like around 10 PSI. That's how the car should have been. I, I know I keep saying that again and again, but it's so much better. Let's go. Past 4,000 RPM, it's pulling. Yep. 10% PSI at 60% throttle. That's That's awesome.
did it add power? I think so. I absolutely do think so. I mean, just with the over the shelf tube, people say you get around 15 horsepower. And with the tuner, he says 250 to the wheel horsepower. So you are feeling more. But more importantly, you have so much more power after 4,000 RPM. It is not falling flat. It makes such a big difference. It's, the car is so much more fun. You have to get a stage one in this car, unfortunately, if you really want to enjoy it. Why Subaru? So we'll do some more pulls. That's not my car, so I'm not going to go 100% throttle, but like, I don't need to. The pa you can tell a big, big difference. So we're in first gear. We've got to make left. Go to second gear. Rev hang, very quick. It's not even there. Let's go. Yeah, that's so much better. Now, after 55,000 RPM, it does drop off a little bit, but that's because the turbo is running out of juice, which is totally fine. But the fact that you get 4,000 to around 55,000 RPM, it holds the pull. That's that's a lot better. So downshift, third gear, we have 3,500 RPM. 10 PSI, 13 PSI, oh yeah. That's better, this is, this is good. Now comparing to Nick's car, Nick's car is at a whole nother level. That car goes with two, three PSI, it's flying. That's a whole nother level. But with the stage one, I just wanna focus on the drivability. Drivability is absolutely fantastic. And bonus, you get more power and it holds till around 5,500 RPM, so it, it's it's a no-brainer. So anyone who has a WRX, you have to get a stage one. Uh, you don't have to get it right now. No, you don't, because obviously there's warranty and that's why I'm waiting on it, but you have to get eventually to truly appreciate the car. It's a shame that there's so much um, hidden power in this car and Subaru locks it all up. I mean, you know, they do it for all, you know, obvious reasons for emissions, you know, it has to meet certain criteria. First gear, making a left turn, going to second, drops right away, easy shift, really smooth. <laughs> so much better. Alright guys, that's it for this video. You know, just a quick little review on the stage one. Do I recommend it? Absolutely. Absolutely you should get it. So stay tuned. We'll catch you guys in the next one. Take care.